locomotives are the key to victory. The production of a utility engine is now underway at a works in Scotland. RAF locobusting not only draws the lifeblood of enemy transport, it raises a problem for us when we invade Europe. Designers working to Ministry of Supply orders got out plans for an austerity locomotive for use first on British railways, then overseas with the invading armies. Working to an approved design for an engine to haul 700 tons, it was found that in steel castings alone, the weight was reduced from 21 tons to four. No less important in times of manpower shortage, the design saved 6,000 man hours on every engine made. Old Robert Lithgow, 70, has been with the firm 43 years, and even he isn't the veteran here. Thomas Alexander is 76 and started here 60 years ago when back here was fought and sent out. Tommy Puan comes from China, near Chongqing. He wants to be able to make engines to beat the Japs. All sorts of jobs on austerity locomotives are done by girls. It was a memorable day at the works when the first engine was completely assembled. It has the standard British gauge, four foot eight and a half, but it can be quickly adapted to run anywhere on the continent. No time was lost before stoking up for boiler tests. One reason why these locomotives can be made quickly is that they're not built primarily for speed. Heavy haulage between 30 and 40 miles an hour is all that's wanted. When locomotive number one rolled out of the works, the Minister of Supply, Sir Andrew Duncan, was on the footplate. He had good cause for satisfaction. While Britain can turn out locomotives in plenty, fighter command of the Red Armies are taking crippling toll of Nazi transport. It's good to know that when the second front is open, the army will have all the engines it wants. 